This overview of the legacy of Greek civilization provides a brief summary of the most important people, places, and events of ancient Greece. Its purpose is to help you better understand the historical background of the topics that we studied during the first marking period in preparation for your quarterly exam. The Geography of Greece Greece is a peninsula at the southeastern tip of Europe. Hundreds of islands, also part of Greece, surround the peninsula. Much of Greece is mountainous. Mount Olympus, in myth the home of Greek gods, rises to more than 9,000 feet. Because of the rocky soil, which makes farming difficult, early Greeks settled along the coast where they raised olives, grapes, and other crops suited to the mild climate. Three seas border Greece, the Mediterranean, the Aegean, and the Ionian. The early Greeks became excellent shipbuilders, navigators, and sailors. Land travel in ancient times was almost impossible because of the many rugged mountains. So the Greeks carried on their trade with Asian and African cities by sea. The Minoans. Around 2000 BC, a seafaring people on the large island of Crete in the eastern Mediterranean Sea created a prosperous society based on trade. They are known today as the Minoans from the name of the legendary Cretan king named Minos. The Minoans had a great influence on Greek civilization. The Minoans owed their wealth in part to the rich natural resources of Crete, which included wheat, wine, olive oil, and wool. Their other major assets were timber and the know-how to build seaworthy ships. Their ships helped the Minoans dominate trade in the eastern Mediterranean. Trade stimulated Minoan crafts, which included finely decorated pottery, colorful woolens, and gold and silver drinking vessels and daggers. There were several kingdoms on Crete, and the rulers used wealth gained through trade to build richly decorated palaces connected with paved roads. The Mycenaeans. Around 1450 BC, a warrior people from mainland Greece overran Crete. They are known today as the Mycenaeans. Their ancestors had migrated into Greece from the north and spoke an early form of the Greek language. The Mycenaeans were organized into many small kingdoms, each of which had its own hilltop fortress commanding the surrounding farmlands. The most impressive of these was Mycenae, from which their culture takes its name. Protected by a high, thick stone wall, Mycenae was a powerful fortress. According to legend, the Mycenaeans fought and won a war with Troy, a city in what is now Turkey. Historians once believed that the story of this war caused by a beautiful woman named Helen was just a legend. But around 1870, a German archaeologist discovered layers of nine cities, each built on top of the previous one. Did he find Troy? Today, historians believe that he did, and that the Trojan War actually took place, though no one really knows what caused the war. 1200 BC, soon after the Trojan War, the Mycenaean civilization declined, and another gradually took its place among the ruined cities. A people called the Dorians migrated from the north into Greece. They enslaved many Greeks, and Greek civilization declined. In fact, Greek writing disappeared. Not until sometime in the 700s BC did the Greeks develop their alphabet. Many historians think that the words of the poet Homer were first written down at this time. The Gods of Olympus One of ancient Greece's gifts to the world was its mythology, the famous stories of its gods. The following are the names, functions, and the family relationships of most of the important Greek gods. Zeus was the sky god and king of the gods. Poseidon was the god of the sea and brother to Zeus. Hades was the ruler of dead and another brother to Zeus. Hera was queen of the gods and wife of Zeus. Demeter was the goddess of the harvest and sister of Zeus. Hephaestus was the god of fire and metalwork and he was the son of Hera. Ares was the god of war. He was the son of Zeus. Aphrodite was the goddess of love and beauty and Zeus's own daughter. Hermes was the messenger to the gods and he was the son of Zeus. Athena was the goddess of wisdom and daughter of Zeus. Apollo 
was the god of inspiration and art, and son of Zeus. Artemis was the goddess of the hunt and the moon, and daughter of Zeus. And Dionysus was the god of wine, and also the son of Zeus. The Rise of the City-States Early Greek communities were separated from each other by geography. So they became politically independent. These communities formed city-states. A city-state, called a polis, consisted of an independent city and the country around it, including small villages. Greek city-states were governed in a number of ways over the years. At first, kings or monarchs ruled in a monarchy. Then a wealthy group of landowners ruled in an aristocracy. Discontented residents revolted against this rule, however, and powerful leaders called tyrants emerged. Later, wealthy merchants gained power and ruled in an oligarchy, which means ruled by a few. Eventually, some city-states, such as Athens, were ruled by citizens in a democracy. Two rival city-states, Athens and Sparta, were vastly different in their style of life and in their government. Athens In an early Greek democracy, such as the one in Athens, only male citizens could vote. Women, slaves, and foreigners could not. In Athens, life centered about the marketplace, or agora, the theater, and the temples. In the marketplace, people sold what they had grown or made. Playgoers attended comedies or tragedies in a large outdoor theater built into the side of a hill. The center of Athens was a rocky hill called the Acropolis. Several temples stood on the Acropolis, but the most important of these was the Parthenon. Here, Worships offered animal sacrifices to Athena, god of war, wisdom, and art. Life in the city-state of Sparta could not have been more different from life in Athens. Spartan government was complicated. Two kings trained the Spartan army. All adult males made up an assembly. In addition, a council of elders proposed laws. Finally, five people called ephors held most of the power. Three classes of people lived in Sparta, the ruling class who owned the land, free men who were not citizens but who were farmers and artisans, and people called helots who worked as servants. Helots were treated as slaves. They were not free. The Spartan way of life was intended to prepare citizens for war. At the age of seven, boys left home and started military training. They marched shoeless, ate small meals, and slept on hard benches. Spartan girls were trained as athletes. Soldiers lived in barracks, even when they were married, and served until they were 60 years of age. The Persian Wars were fought between Greece and the Persian Empire. This conflict began when the Persians took control of the Greek city-states along the coast of Asia Minor in 546 BC. These city-states, supported by Athens, finally rebelled in 499 BC. Persia invaded mainland Greece to punish Athens, but in 490 BC, the Athenians won a great victory over the Persians at Marathon, a plain near Athens. After this defeat, the Persians were determined to conquer all of Greece. They began to build a great army and navy. The Athenians also began to build a great navy. When the two enemies met again in a sea battle at Salamis, the Athenians won again. The Spartans then defeated the Persians on land in a third battle. The Greeks were still, were still very wary of the Persians, however, and the 140 Greek city-states formed the Delian League to defend the country and to try to free those city-states still under Persian rule. Because Delian League members paid taxes to Athens, it soon became the richest and most important city-state in Greece. The Golden Age of Athens the Golden Age of Athens lasted from 480 to 430 BC. This period of political power and cultural achievement is closely linked to the career of a wise Athenian leader named Pericles, who lived from 495 to 429 BC. He led Athens to a stronger democracy. Under Pericles, the government positions were paid, and more citizens can serve than before. As Pericles himself said, no one is kept in political obscurity because of poverty. However, only male citizens could serve in the government. 
Greek thinkers. A group of teachers and thinkers called sophists were well known for their ideas about right and wrong. Boys were sent to learn from them so that they could become good citizens. A philosopher called Socrates was opposed to the sophist, however. He tried through questioning to lead people to discover great truths about life for themselves. He was considered dangerous, however. He was charged with corrupting the young and introducing new gods. As a result, Socrates was sentenced to death. Socrates left no writings, but his pupil Plato did. In the Apology, he presented speech Socrates delivered at his trial. Plato wrote that Socrates said they had done nothing more than persuade both young and old to care for their soul, rather for their body or wealth. Greek Arts and Architecture It was during the Golden Age that architects and sculptors created their finest work. Begun in 447 BC, the Parthenon originally held a gigantic golden ivory statue of the goddess Athena. Pericles was responsible for planning work on the Parthenon. When Athenians objected to the expense, he said, we must devote ourselves to acquiring things that will be the source of everlasting fame. We know of his fame 2,500 years later. Greek sculptors were superb at fashioning life-size human figures from bronze and marble. During the Golden Age, the faces of the figures often showed more expression than earlier works had, making them seem like images of real people. The Greeks were enthusiastic playgoers. Greek drama grew out of religious ceremonies to celebrate various events. Tragedies written during the Golden Age dealt with themes involving right and wrong, the fate of humans who suffer misfortune, and human interactions with the gods. Comedies were more concerned with interactions among humans. The, the Peloponnesian War Unfortunately, the Golden Age of Athens did not last. Sparta became increasingly jealous and even frightened of Athens' power and influence. Sparta, not a member of the Delian League, declared war against Athens in 431 BC. The Spartans wanted to fight a land war and began to burn crops in an effort to starve the Athenians. The Athenians had a superior navy, however, and Pericles thought that they could win the war at sea. After ten years of fighting, Sparta and Athens finally signed a truce, but scattered fighting continued. In 415 BC, a member of the Athenian assembly convinced the Athenians to force city-states on the island of Sicily to become part of the Athenian Empire. The Athenian army was captured, however, and much of the navy was defeated. Sparta then attacked Athens, as did the Persians. In 404 BC, the Athenians surrendered to the Spartans. The Golden Age of Athens was ended. Alexander the Great In the middle of the 4th century, several tribes in Macedon in the north of Greece united under a ruler named Philip. He was made king in 359 BC. His ambitious son became king after Philip's death. Alexander first united all the Greeks and invaded Persia. He conquered the huge empire from Macedon and Egypt in the west to the border of India in the east. He died in 323 BC at the tender age of 33. Known as Alexander the Great, his conquests spread Greek civilization throughout the Middle East. Greece itself declined, however, and was conquered by the Romans in 146 BC. The Greek Legacy Greek ideas spread far beyond the borders of Greece. Greek mythology has provided a rich source of subjects for writers and artists. Greek drama, art, and architecture are known throughout the world. Democracy and science began with the Greeks. Most important, the Greeks introduced the idea that the individual person has value.